All right, welcome back to another calculus lecture, uh, part three of limits. Uh, so today we're going to talk about limits at infinity. So, uh, so far we've discussed limits at finite points, but we can also take our limit going off to infinity, and that's what we'll talk about today. Um, in my last lecture, I said that this was going to be our last uh, limit topic. Uh, I might have lied there. There is one more topic that I want to discuss, and uh, we'll talk about that in tomorrow's lecture. Uh, so we'll have a, a four-part series on limits, which is uh, perhaps more limits than you wanted, but alas, uh, there is content that I want to make sure that I cover for you all. Okay, so limits at infinity. So um, I guess maybe let's start with a uh, with some notation. So notation. So um, the notation uh, limit as x goes to uh, plus or minus infinity here. The plus or minus, I never take both of these at the same time, but um, I am either choosing to go to positive infinity or negative infinity. So this uh, means that we uh, consider the behavior of f of x as x gets very large um, in the positive or negative direction. So positive being the plus here, negative being the minus here in the positive or negative direction. And <clears throat> This quantity here is called a limit at infinity. So I care about as x gets very, very large, uh, you know, 10 million, 10 trillion, 10 quad, any big number you want. Uh, I care about what this function does as x gets very large, either as it's going to positive infinity to the right of zero or to negative infinity to the left of zero. And the next thing I want to say is a definition. So if the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to L, and this is a number, so this is less than infinity, that is L is just a finite number, it's you know, five or, or 20,000 or, or some, some number like this, some real number, uh, or the limit as x goes to negative infinity, ah, negative, let me actually just write that on a new line. Limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals L, which is less than infinity. That is, again, it's just a real number. Uh, then L is a horizontal asymptote of f of x. All right, so if my if, as x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity, and I'm getting closer and closer to some real number L, then we say that L is a horizontal asymptote of f of x. And graphically, maybe let's, let's look at this with a few examples. So if f of x has a graph which looks like you know, maybe I have negative one, negative two, uh, one and two. I don't really care about the units here, um, but it's doing something like, yeah, like this. Then I would have horizontal, so this is f of x then f would have horizontal asymptotes at plus and minus one. So f of x has horizontal asymptotes at plus or minus 
one. Notice I don't need to go to in both directions here. The, the plus one is only as x goes to positive infinity, and the negative one is only as x goes to negative infinity. So um, f of x is going to have two horizontal asymptotes, one in the positive direction and the other in the negative direction. Uh, I could also have something where I only have a horizontal asymptote on one side. So a simple example of this is uh, f of x equals e to the x. So this function looks like, uh, well, let's draw that here. This is one, two, three, whatever. The units aren't super important. Uh, but the graph of e to the x looks something like this. And it sort of continues along uh, here in the negative direction. So this, um, if x is a negative number, so if x equals negative a for some a greater than 0, so that is x is a negative number, uh, then e to the x is equal to 1 over e to the a. And as a gets very large, so as x goes to negative infinity, so as x goes to negative infinity, um, this number, a, is going to positive infinity. So if x goes to negative infinity, then the number a here is going to positive infinity, and I'm getting 1 over e to a really big number. Uh, so 1 over e to the a gets very small and approaches uh, zero. Is that on the camera? Yes, it is. Um, so uh, the limit as x goes to positive infinity of e to the x, well, as I go to positive infinity, I just shoot off to infinity here. But as I go to negative infinity, I get very close to zero. So we have the limit as x goes to positive infinity of e to the x is just positive infinity or it doesn't exist as a real number. Um, but the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the x is gonna be equal to zero. Because as I go to the left, one over e to the a, this is like one over a million, one over 10 million, one over 100 million. This is getting very, very small and getting closer and closer to zero. And so the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the x is going to be zero. All right, so that's kind of the basic idea behind what uh, limits at infinity sort of represent. The next thing that I want to talk about is um, kind of the, the behavior of uh, certain functions at infinity. So uh, behavior of powers, actually at infinity. And by powers, I just mean like x to the five, x to the seven, something, something like this. So I guess maybe what's, we'll call this a, a theorem. Yeah, we'll call it a theorem. So theorem, um, if in, or actually we'll, we'll say, yeah, we'll, We'll call it D, actually. If D uh, is a positive number and D is a whole number. So D is just a, a positive whole number, one, two, three, four, five, these guys. Um, then we can actually say what X to the D does at infinity. So the limit as x goes to positive infinity of x to the d, this is always just positive infinity. And then the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x to the d is equal to, and here we have to break into two cases, and I'll draw pictures in a moment to illustrate this. Um, but we'll do cases here. So this is uh, positive infinity if d is even, so two, four, six, whatever. That looks like is seven, but whatever. Uh, and as I go to negative infinity, I'm going to uh, get negative infinity if D is odd. 
So this is, uh, the, these are what's called the end behavior of uh, x to the d. So maybe we'll put that up here, end behavior. It's another word for it, so you might hear this in other contexts. Uh, but all it's asking about is uh, limits as x goes to plus or minus infinity. So uh, pictures of this. So we'll just do the, the simplest cases. So x squared, we know what the graph of that looks like. It's kind of a parabola. And as I go to positive infinity, then as I go to the right, I get positive infinity in my limit. And as I go to negative infinity, I get negative infinity in my limit. For odd powers, and we'll just illust illustrate this with x cubed maybe, um, the graph of that looks something like this. And so as I go to the right, I get positive infinity, <clears throat> but as I go to the left, I get negative infinity. And the reason for this is because any even power, that negative is being uh, multiplied by itself an even number of times. And so if I do a negative times a negative, I get a positive. And so that's what's happening with even powers. And with odd powers, you pick up, well, the extra negative. Uh, and so you, you take a negative number and multiply it by itself an odd number of times and you get a negative number back out. So that's why the end behavior for even and odd functions is slightly different. Okay, so what I wanna do now is actually uh, compute uh, certain limits. And uh, there are limits that I wanna compute which are uh, the limits of rational functions as x uh, goes to rational functions at infinity. So limits of rational functions at infinity. So maybe let's start with an example. Let's compute the limit as x goes to positive infinity of, oh, I don't know, 5x squared plus 2x over 3x cubed plus x plus 1. I don't know, something like this. Well, if I just sort of put in, in sort of infinity for x, well, I get infinity divided by infinity, which is not a meaningful quantity. So equals question mark infinity over infinity. So we need to do something a little bit different here. We need to actually uh, say what this function is doing at infinity. And the first observation that I want to make is, um, let's think about, so I have x, I have all these different powers of x. I have x squared, x, x cubed, and, and x itself here, and x to the zero, which is just a constant. So if x is, you know, so maybe let's, let's put this as an observation. If x is very large, then, well, do I really care about, you know, if x is like 10 million, then do I care about 10 million or 10 million squared? Which of those is the much bigger quantity, the uh, thing that's actually contributing to the size of this expression? Well, if x is very large, uh, x squared is uh, much larger than x. And x cubed is much larger than x squared. Another way to say this is that x cubed is order is an order of magnitude bigger than x squared, and x squared likely is an order of magnitude bigger than x. So x cubed is an order of magnitude Uh, bigger than x squared. And likewise, x squared for is an order of magnitude bigger than x. And 
What does this actually mean? Well, it means that in the limit, as x goes to infinity, if I think about each of these quantities individually, well, the, the dominant term is going to be these, this leading order term, the term with the highest degree. So in the limit, the leading order terms, or the highest order terms, that is the highest power of x, dominate. And again, the idea is that x squared, if x is like 10 million or, or 10 trillion or 10 to the power of 100 million quadrillion, whatever you wanna say, x squared is so much bigger than x that this second term here just does not matter at all in the limit. And likewise in the denominator, only this leading order term matters in the limit as x gets very, very large. Um, thus, uh, we should have that the limit above is, well, just the limit where you ignore the other terms except for the leading order terms. So limit as x approaches infinity of 5x squared over 3x cubed. And this we can simplify. This is the limit as x goes to infinity of, well, cancel out the x squared here and I get 5 over 3x. But then as x goes to infinity, this is again the same case as we had before with the e to the x. I'm getting a, a I'm dividing by a larger and larger number. And so this is just going to be zero. So this is sort of an informal way of reasoning, but we can, we can make this rigorous uh, if we do a little bit of work. So let's do that on another page. So let's make this idea rigorous. That is, let's actually show that this happens in, in uh, the general case. Or maybe we'll just do a specific example and you can think about, and, and then we'll just say what the general case is without doing sort of a formal proof. So what was our limit here? I actually need to, to look at that again. So 5x squared plus 2x, 3x cubed plus x plus one. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x squared plus 2x over 3x cubed plus x plus 1. So now I want to actually do a calculation where I show that this limit really is uh, equal to 0. That's what we sort of said that it should be before. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to pick out the highest power of x in here, which in this case is x cubed, and we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator uh, by the same thing. We're going to not intrinsically alter this expression, but just rewrite it. Rewrite it. We're going to multiply by 1, but in a creative way. And the way that we're going to do that, so this is the limit as x goes to infinity, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply and divide by 1 over this power. So 1 over x cubed, 1 over x cubed, and then times 5x squared plus 2x over 3x cubed plus x plus 1. And now what I'm going to do, and, and realize I haven't changed anything, so this equality is true. I've just multiplied by 1. This cancels out with, one, with itself. But what happens is I can distribute this to each of these terms here. So what happens is I get the that this is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to infinity. And now we just try and simplify. So 1 over x cubed times 5x squared, this is going to be 5 divided by x plus 2 divided by, well, this is x to the 1 divided by x squared. So this is going to be plus 2 over x squared. And then we divide by, well, 3x squared divided by, or 3x cubed divided by x cubed, this is just going to be 3 plus 1 over x squared plus 1 over x cubed. 
And that's what we get when we uh, distribute everything to all the terms. Well, now let's just apply some limit laws. So this should equal, so this is a quotient of sums and the properties of limits tell us that this is equal to, well, the limit as x approaches infinity of five over x plus the limit as x approaches infinity of two over x squared divided by the limit as x goes to infinity of three plus the limit as x goes to infinity of one over x squared plus the limit as x goes to infinity of two, uh, one over x cubed. And I realize this is uh, a little bit messy, but I have, uh, all I've done is just move the limit operator and distributed it over all of my uh, quantities because limit laws tell me that I can do this. So this equality is actually gonna be like right here. So now I could continue to do, uh, expand this out and, and apply limit laws, but let's go ahead and just abbreviate the steps. Each of these limits is going to be zero. Well, this one, this one, this one, and this one are all zero because as X goes to infinity, I'm dividing by a bigger and bigger number. So this is equal to zero plus zero. Well, this is just a constant. So this is three plus zero plus zero. Here at this step, I'm actually executing all of the limits. And so this is equal to zero. And so we have rigorously shown now, we've done this little creative multiplying by one step here, we've rigorously shown that this limit is in fact zero. And so maybe uh, for the last thing that we'll do, let's state a general theorem that allows you to compute this limit, um, limits like this in general. So theorem, So the limit as x goes to uh, plus or minus infinity, this works if, if we change this to a negative, negative infinity as well. And what I'll do is I'll write some general polynomials. So if I have a polynomial where x uh, a sub d, x to the power of d, so the subscript d is just indexing this coefficient a, this a sub d is just a, a real number, plus a sub d minus one, d minus one. So I'm gonna write it, write it in descending order. Um, one of the important things with doing these limits is uh, it always, the, the highest order term matters, but I don't necessarily have to write them uh, in this ascending order. They may be out of order, but it still applies in the same way. You just rewrite it. Uh, a sub one times x plus a sub zero. So again, this is just a general polynomial where each of these are coefficients and then these are descending powers of x. So this divided by, and now I need some more coefficients. So maybe uh, b sub uh, d, let's do, oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good letter, c, sure b sub c, x to the c, plus b sub c minus one, x to the c minus one. The c and d are different, perhaps, or they could be the same. Uh, c sub one, x, plus c sub zero. So this limit is equal to the limit as x goes to or, uh, plus or minus infinity of just the leading order terms. And we can use our limit laws to, these are just numbers, so these come outside of the limit. So this is uh, a sub d over b sub c times the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of, well, this is x to the d minus c. And this limit we can evaluate using our uh, notes from before about the end behavior of powers. So all this is saying, this is a very general sort of way of 
uh, saying the idea that the limit of as x goes to infinity of rational functions only depends on the highest order term. So that is the limit of a rational function at plus or minus infinity only depends on the leading order term, leading order terms, or highest order terms. So maybe let's, uh, as an example, so some concrete examples, instead of just stating this theorem and then letting it be, uh, let's actually do a few computations uh, with this. And then that'll be where we end today. So examples. I'm inconsistent about which line I start on. I realized this. Sorry for all of you that are bothered by that. So let's just compute several limits. So the limit as x goes to infinity of, well, let's do x squared plus 2x over 5x squared plus 1. Limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed, uh, 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1 over 7x to the 10th minus uh, 3. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 5x uh, to the 4th plus 7x to the 5th minus 1 over 4x uh, to the third plus 2x to the sixth plus one. Okay, so we've got three limits here and I want to apply the theorem that we just, uh, that we just wrote down. So this limit, so the theorem says that this limit should be equal to and I'm going to try and align these so it, it looks halfway decent. So this first limit, I pick out the highest order terms, which are x squared and 5x squared. So this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared divided by 5x squared, which is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 fifth, and this is equal to 1 fifth. Okay, um, actually I realize I want to change this down here. This is going to be a four. This second limit, again, I do the same thing. So the limit as x goes to infinity, the highest order terms, 5x to the third and 7x to the tenth. And then we do some simplification. This is 5 sevenths times the limit as x goes to infinity. All I've done here is take these constants outside the limit. This is x to the 3 minus 10, so x to the uh, negative 7. And if I have a negative power of x, this is just going to be uh, 5 sevenths times 0, which is 0. Because as x goes to infinity, this is 1 over x to the 7, so this is just going to go to 0. I'm dividing by a bigger and bigger number. Here, I have the limit as x goes to negative infinity. I pick out the highest order terms. Notice I haven't written them in descending order. I go, uh, the highest order term is not necessarily at the front here. So the highest order term, limit as x goes to negative infinity, highest order term in the top is 7x to the fifth. And then in the bottom, it's 2x to the fourth. So this is 7 halves times the limit as x goes to negative infinity of just, well, 5 minus 4 is just 1. And then the end behavior of an odd power of x, this is x to the power of 1. As x goes to negative infinity, this is going to go towards negative infinity as well. So this is negative infinity. Okay. 
So that's uh, a few examples of computations using this theorem. Rational functions uh, are uh, fairly easy to understand at infinity. You just apply this theorem and look at the, the highest order terms, which may not be written in the front. You actually have to make sure you pick them out from the uh, numerator and denominator correctly. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we will uh, conclude our quartet series of uh, limit lectures. We're going to talk about something called the squeeze theorem and then look at just a few uh, particular limits that I want you all to know. All right, so I will see you all in the next lecture.